So I was thinking the other day about this idea behind being resilient. It's a uh, principle that's been very heavy on my mind lately, all things considered. But vis-a-vis -vis the whole idea behind those who are in business for themselves, those who are um, having to change and zigzag with the whims of destiny and change and you know, a lot of us entrepreneurs, even though we're small time entrepreneurs, but so I wanted to share a little bit of insight on the, the, the definition of resilient, what it means to be resilient. Uh, you know, we talk about a lot of these principles that are often written about in self help books, you know, even Tony Robbins would talk about resiliency and adaptability and and other things like uh, having a mindset and having passion and having goals and having having things like um, certainty. Certainty is a principle. This is what I want, you know, and commitment, all these things. So in that vein, I wanted to talk about resiliency. So resilient is a different definition than adaptable. Adaptable typically means, you know, you can adapt to new conditions when things happen. And uh, think of an adapter for your camera. You can adapt a, either a, a lens that belongs to a different uh, body and you can get an adapter and adapt the lens to that body. So the definition of resilient is completely different. However, the two work hand in hand. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples, but first the description of resiliency. Resilient means that you're able to uh, uh, you can tolerate adverse circumstances, or you can sort of go through struggles that are often painful, uh, difficult, they're difficult, challenging circumstances. Oftentimes, that means you get to a point where you then adapt to the new set of circumstances. So resilient means you have the ability to cope with and struggle through and work through it so that you can come out the other side. I think that this is oftentimes a, uh, a rarer, it's a rarer characteristic in most people. When I'm talking about most people, I'm talking about the masses in general. Most people like their security. We respond mostly to fear, fear-based um, struggles. And, you know, we, we, we want, I believe we want we want to be safe more than we want to face the fears. So, so anyways, the, that's that for that. So I think it applies to uh, most of us who are in business for ourselves because being in business for yourself means you're going to put up with a lot more <laughs> adverse circumstances than anyone else. I mean, it's a struggle and, you know, you know, that, I don't know if you've ever been through this where, you know, you, you don't have money for the rent or the mortgage or to feed the kids. And because photography business is down, I mean, and it's the end of the month that's coming or you're late, you know, that's, that's a challenging situation. So you would think the smart thing to do in that situation is, okay, what do I need to do next time to avoid that? So you want to do things that will build your business and you want to have good habits you want to have put things in place that will, in the worst case scenario, God forbid they show up. But even if they don't show up, it's a smart thing to have things in place so that in case they do, you're prepared. And if they don't, well, whatever. Let's say you saved money and you developed some strong habits and things show up. You know, shit hits the fan, so to speak. And if they don't, whatever you've got this new mindset you've got this new skill set and you've got money in the bank so you're in a good position all around so so in a sense in that sense it's a bit of a skill set and it takes discipline it takes delayed gratification it takes a bit of maturity and it takes a lot of insight to be able to sort of look at the possibilities or the possible struggles that may show up and planning for that so i often would ask myself what is the worst case scenario that could happen? Okay, so let me give you a small example. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of people uh, and uh, compare their resiliency and adaptability. The 
so if I'm going to a wedding and it looks like it might rain, of course, I'm going to plan for that. So Friday, I'm all packed. I, I'm kind of really anal about being prepared for things like a wedding or any photography gig. So I make sure I have everything. I think about everything. Am I forgetting a cord? Am I forgetting a charger? Do I have enough batteries? Do I have enough flashcards? Are my flashcards reformatted? Uh, are my cameras ready? All the settings ready? Do I have all the cameras I need? Do I have all the lenses I need? Do I have enough flashes and batteries for my flashes? All that stuff. All the day before. I never plan the day of because it's just me. And I get too stressed out. But if it looks like it might rain, I make contingency plans. So I'll have talked to the bride and groom and say, look, in the case of rain, we've got to have a plan. That's a conversation we have weeks before. So that's not a big deal. I never not have that conversation. And I bring umbrellas. I'll bring, I have like 20 colorful umbrellas. I put them in the trunk of the car. So if it looks like it might rain, I show up at the bride's house and I'm starting to photograph her and I'll say something and I'll make it sound conversational. I'll say, look, in case it's raining later, I just want to remind you, we're going to have go to Remember, We talked about that plan. We're going to go to do this and that. And by the way, we can still do some pictures outside because I have a bunch of umbrellas and we'll do some fun shots. I want to put her mind at ease. So in a sense, that's, uh, being resilient and uh, working through and being adaptable to adverse situations and circumstances. I think it's a real skill set. and It's very, very, very important. So I'll give you a couple examples of people. Now, one of my favorite, favorite people in the world is Muhammad Ali. He's uh, very adaptable and very resilient. So uh, you, you, you might say, well, how is he adaptable as a boxer? Well, he adapts to different fighting styles. And he's resilient because he has the ability to adapt. So he's very disciplined. Uh, when he was in the top at the top of his game, he developed a lot more than just physical strength and physical boxing skills. He also had a good mental game going on. So he seemed to have the ability to really work through a lot of the um, things he needed to work through to, in order to become a really top-notch boxer. You know, he's my absolute favorite. I absolutely. I think he's a hero. And uh, you know, so he would adapt to different search circumstances and uh, different fighters. He studied them and he came up with a plan in his head. So resiliency, that's resiliency. Uh, I think about Warren, Warren and Paula, who had to uh, pretty much move out of their town and Warren uh, not really close his business down, but he took advantage of a new business opportunity he moved four or five hours away got a and he had you know very he had a very him and paula had a very successful photography business and um you know the whole covid thing just kind of screwed things up for him so an opportunity came his way and he grabbed it now he's probably still going to be shooting but probably not to the same degree he was before and uh it's easy to look at a guy like that and say well what would i have done would I have felt sorry for myself? Would I have taken a job? You see, now, Warren is the kind of guy who's resilient. If you know his story, he's resilient. He goes, to any, he goes into any situation and he brings this whole, this whole array of um, skills to the game. And when I say that, I say that in reference to his new situation. I know it's going to work out for him. I know it will. And he knows too, and so does Paula, because they, um, they have resiliency. That's what being resilient is, putting up with adverse situations. And um, you, I think of the book uh, written by Napoleon Hill. Oh, it's one of his books anyways. Could have been Think and Grow Rich, where he said that each and every adversity has within it the seeds of equal or greater opportunity. So... I absolutely love that quote. And the first time I read it when I was 21 years old, it just really stuck with me. I thought, man, nobody ever told me that before. Because uh, it's so true. You know, any situation that is going to throw challenges at you, if you go in it with that mindset that, hey, I can learn and grow, there's opportunity here. There's nothing but opportunity here with this situation. So 
So some of the uh, strategies that I like to use are, I already mentioned the first one, that is worst case scenario. I imagine the worst case scenario. What's the worst thing that can happen? And let's sort of do what we can. I mean, I don't want to get crazy about it. I don't want to get obsessive about it, but um, you know, I want to plan for worst case scenario. The second thing I, I think is important is, you know, to have, these are things you can take care of on your own. And that is to have really good health, both physical health and mental health. Uh, stay healthy, eat healthy, exercise. You don't have to go crazy. I mean, a good brisk walk every day will do it for you. But if you're eating really well and uh, avoiding the big bad habits that can afflict us if we let them because we feel bad for ourselves or things are out of control, you want to be able to uh, put your health as top priority. So, and also healthy finances. Um, do whatever you can to minimize debt and to clear up any messes in that area. So these things will all help you prepare so that you can be as resilient as is possible. When adverse situations show up, if you have two or three or four things that could have been either managed or eradicated before the situation showed up, then you're in a much better place. So if adverse situations show up and then you got these other things, it's just extra burden. It's going to make life a lot, lot harder for you. So, so yeah, it's an asset. It's a skill set. It's a mindset. And it's something worth thinking about. And it's worth planning so that you can keep growing on all areas in your business and in your photography business. So if you have any questions, pop them in the comment section and don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And uh, I want to hear what you have to say about this. All right, guys. Thank you.